to the lead. We're going to begin with our national lead. On the day that President Obama is forced into the role of consoler in chief again, before the president even took off for Roseburg, Oregon, the nation experienced yet another campus shooting early this morning. Students gripped in fear and sadness after one of their classmates was killed and three others injured at Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. Police say there was a fight between two groups of students. One student pulled a gun and shot four others in a parking lot next to a student residence hall. All victims were part of the same fraternity. The gunman, believed to be a freshman at the school, is in custody. Meantime, President Obama just touched down in Oregon and is heading to the site of last week's campus shooting to help the community heal. But not everyone in the community is eager to rest their heads on his shoulder. Many gun rights activists signed up to protest the president's appearance just hours after the shooting at Umqua Community College last week. The president said he thought mass shootings are something that should be politicized. Well, this is what that looks like. CNN's Sarah Seidner is live for us in Roseburg, Oregon. Sarah? Jake, I want to tell you that right now, as we speak, the president is meeting with some of the victims' families who have gone through the worst time in their lives, lost their family members in this mass shooting. And while he's meeting with the families, there are folks who don't believe he should be here in the first place. We've been looking at protests uh, throughout the morning here that have dwindled down now because everyone is heading over to the high school where the president is meeting one by one with the victims of the families who would like to meet with him. Some folks are very clear in their message to President Obama. And this is all about gun rights and gun control. Mourners with fresh flowers keep arriving. I actually ended up having a dream the other night. and It was really terrifying and I just felt like I needed to come up here and let it go and just honor these people that had lost their life. Mackenzie Reed was born and raised in Roseburg, where a student gunman massacred nine people, then killed himself inside the Umqua Community College. The small Oregon town, united in grief, finds itself divided over a visit by the President of the United States. As President Obama arrives to meet with the victims' families privately, there is a public display of disdain for him. He's here to promote anti-gun agenda and standing on the bodies of dead children to do that is not okay. Well, the bad people will always have guns, they'll always do crimes. And the absolute proof of that is that that community college was a gun-free zone. The folks here are not just from Roseburg, but other parts of Oregon. They are particularly angry about what the president said the day of the shooting. It cannot be this easy for somebody who wants to inflict harm on other people to get his or her hands on a gun. These may be the loudest voices, but they are not the only ones who speak for Roseburg. The town mayor is rolling out the welcome mat. We are very happy that he's coming to Roseburg. We welcome him and we are going to treat him with respect and uh, open our arms and appreciate that he is here in our town. And so do some of the residents with one big caveat. It must be all about the victims' families. No political statements wanted. If he's going to come here, then he needs to just come here to honor and not to to face any of the issues. Well, it's good that he's trying to come to comfort the families that have lost lives, but I mean, a lot of people have their ups and downs about him. Me, I just stay neutral. Politically speaking, though, Roseburg has been referred to as a red dot in a blue state, a conservative town where logging work once paid the wages of many, an industry that eventually splintered and ground to a near halt. But fishing, farming, and hunting are still an integral part of life. Here, many say guns aren't the problem. People who misuse them are. Now you're seeing some of the remnants of the folks that are out here protesting. But we can tell you there are some folks at the other end uh, of the street who are saying that Mr. Obama is welcome at this point in time. This is a community divided, but they are only divided on the political sense. When it comes to these families, they are very protective of them. And they are united, truly united in grief. Sarah Seidner in Roseburg, Oregon, thank you so much. Joining me now is Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democrat from Connecticut, a big supporter of further restrictions on gun ownership. Senator, thanks so much uh, for joining us. I'm wondering, can you point to a law or a proposed law that might have prevented the massacre in Roseburg, Oregon? There may be no specific law that would have prevented that killing, but we're still awaiting facts about 
how the gun was obtained and what the signs of danger were in this individual. But the common ground here is to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. For example, in Charleston, South Carolina, the shooter there was able to obtain a weapon because he made use of a gap in the law, a loophole that permits gun dealers to sell weapons after 72 hours, even if a background check is not complete. Closing that loophole would seem to be common ground. No background check, no gun if it's a federally licensed dealer. And of course, more universal background checks for gun show sales or internet sales would seem to be common ground. Bringing together red and blue states or localities and east and west, all parts of the country, because I think the vast majority of Americans want to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. And our effort now is to ignite and activate that vast majority so that they can be heard and heeded in Washington, D.C. For the, for the closing of the loophole that you proposed, and I know you're introducing legislation about if the gun, if the, keeping the, the gun from being sold, even if the background check hasn't happened yet, um, what do you say to gun rights advocates who say that person, anybody who intends to commit a crime with a gun or commit a horrific act of violence as happened uh, in Charleston, that they're going to find a gun anyway, that what you're proposing would just keep guns out of the hands of people who are law-abiding? What would your response be? I know from my own experience as a prosecutor, I was a United States attorney in Connecticut, the federal prosecutor for four and a half years, and then attorney general for 20 years. No law is perfect. It depends on vigorous, strong enforcement. And no law is perfect. No law is a panacea or a single solution. But we know from experience in states that have laws that enforce background checks and countries that have laws that keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people, that the crime rates are lower that result in homicides. We know that the presence of a gun in a home where there's domestic violence makes it five times more likely that a woman will be killed, that suicides are more common when guns are involved, mm -hmm. and that the confrontation in Arizona, just to take today's news, was made more deadly by the presence of a gun. So what I would say is that no single law is a panacea, right. but those laws to enable law-abiding gun owners, they have a right to those guns, to continue to have them, can also help keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. Given that we are in the world that we're in, and given that passing any further gun restrictions, even, even uh, uh, closing loopholes, is so difficult, wouldn't it make sense for there to be armed guards on campuses these days? There are armed guards on a lot of campuses, and in fact, in a lot of high schools in Connecticut and elsewhere, there are security forces. Again, no single solution is a panacea. We need to regard this problem as we would any epidemic or contagious disease, the flu, tuberculosis, Ebola, and ignite and activate alarm among average Americans who know that something has to be done. So. Better security at schools was part of the package that we offered back in 2013. It got 60, uh, 55 votes, not the 60 that was necessary, along with other common sense, sensible measures, a ban on illegal mm -hmm. trafficking and straw purchases, and of course, background checks. All right, Senator Blumenthal, Connecticut, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. The politics lead. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.